to arrive in style, first you have to arrive. I don't understand what's going on here. Fourth generation. This is Lungai Nguayla, aka Chocolate Kid Leo. Join our growing show, The Global Sunday. We stream live on YouTube every Sunday, 11:30 a.m. for American MT time, African time, 8:30 p.m. every Sunday. We host special guests. We give you latest news, global news, and the entertainment news. Click the link below if you want to find out more. Thumbs up and some hearts. Cheers. My name is Ash Siddi Christina. I go by Ash. Make time for what you love and for the people you love. Thank you for watching Global Sundays with Lingani. What up, world? My name is Jesse Villegas. I'm originally from Phoenix, Arizona. Currently, I reside in Prescott, Arizona. I own and operate a coffee shop called The Porch. Work hard and be kind. You are watching Global Sunday with Lingani. For those that don't know me, um, I'm a singer. I just, I'm a singer who loves God, you know. I'm that singer who loves God. I sing with Jesus every time I ever sing. So I'm that singer that tells a story. With anything in life, yeah. um, there will be challenges, there will be uh, hurdles and stumbling blocks, but I honestly think to make it, you need perseverance, number one. Secondly, you need dedication. Welcome to the Global Sunday Show. Um, yes, today we have the global news. We have motivation from Miss Classic. We have entertainment news. We have our special guest, Uktenam Shope. Welcome to the Global Sunday with Lunga Nguala. Of course, my name is Lunga Nguala, a.k.a. Chocolate Kid Leo. Joining us in America, uh, Ken Laden. In South Africa, Miss Classic. In Germany, Pipo Tafel. Welcome the host of today on Global Sunday. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Global Sunday. Hello, Miss Classic. Hello, Mr. Laden. Hello, everyone. Oh, hello. How are things in Germany? Well, first day that the weather went up 20 degrees within three days. Wow. So yeah. we're like that. <laughs> <laughs> and how about you, Miss Classic, in Durban? No, the weather is OK. It is warm. But there was a bit of rain. But it, it is cool uh, because we have uh, some star, sun. Because I was panicking, I needed to go to spa and, and soak my body to the jacuzzi after a long week. We were releasing the reports for the kids. So unfortunately, we're going to give them out this week. But it was a lot of work, but it was an awesome week. I met a, a new good friend uh, from Jobek. So we were up and down. At least he's mobile. So I was able to move around and fix whatever that I needed to fix to get ready for today. Yay. Yay! Well, that sounds just like the usual day of an artist. And today is a very special day. So we're right. having Mother's Day around the globe. Hello to all the mothers and 
the grandmothers as well. Yes. And uh, yes. Yes. my mother and my two daughters who are both mothers. Um, it's, it's really incredible. Mother's Day is really important. Um, you know, women shape the world through their children much more than, than men and in institutions of education and everything else. And is giving a little preview to our guest, it's the storytelling that keeps culture alive. It's the storytelling that creates a sense of ethics and a moral code and a sense of self. And so Mother's Day is much more than simply mothers, the individuals. It's also their impact on society and the world. Um, it's a wonderful day to celebrate. Amen. And I was waiting for both of you people and uh, Mr. Laden to uh, say a bit because I'm the woman, I'm the mother. You're so the mother. you have to start. And then I can be the last to say it. Yes. And then in, yes. At last, I want to just emphasize uh, a, a mother is a woman uh, with a relationship with her child or a ch uh, children. Um, and a woman, uh, it symbolizes these five characters of the, the, of, of the world. Uh, it means uh, W stands out for wonderful mother and O stand up for uh, outstanding friends like mom cleaner. And M, another M stands for marvelous daughter. And uh, A stands for adorable sister and N stand for nicest gift of God to men. So happy woman and well, happy Mother's Day to all the women in the whole world globally. Amen, that's Amen. beautiful. So today is a day that also made me think of what we can give to the children. When I was looking at what our guests has been participated in the kind of projects and what has been one of her core project. And that is one thing it is related to the children. And another thing is that is related to reading, which brings me to libraries, which connects me very much to my grandmother because she used to go to the library with me. Oh. So we will find out about that later. What about your week, guys? What have you been doing, Miss Classic? Hey, this week, um, I can say I was just um, spoiling myself as a woman. I haven't done a lot of things except for going to spa and just soak my body there at the jacuzzi and getting a massage and uh, uh, I was jogging and taking good care of myself. You know, you have to love yourself before you can expect the love from other people. Uh, so this is what I was doing, but I was uh, researching a lot about the culture and uh, you know what happened here, we had uh, our king uh, reinstated, um, a, a king of the, Zulus, of the Zulus, our king. So uh, yeah, I, I will talk a bit about it later on, but we'd like to congratulate our king uh, of the Zulu nation. And uh, we would like to pay a tribute to our mother, uh, Queen Mantombi, uh, for, 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 for her stand off. Uh, she was a great mother. So those are, were the news, uh, headline news uh, this week. So we had a lot going on as Zulu Nation here. So yeah, we had to value and uh, focus on our culture a lot because we're seeing all these traditional uh, 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 outfits, people uh, dressing up to symbolize and to respect the queen and also to uh, celebrate the, uh, the, the instate, instating of the king of the Zulus here in South Africa. And Mr. Laden, you came back from travels. Okay, well, um, a couple of things this week, you know, uh, as you know, Pipo very well, um, we just uh, recently, you were in um, Vienna, Austria with Rainer Krenstetter, who is gonna be my successor in 15 years or so when I stepped down in my director role and um, filming a documentary about him because we're getting ready for Margot Fontaine's 102nd birthday celebration on May 19th. And my whole week has been focused on that, including 
um, going and having a walkthrough of what is probably going to be our new facility. And I'm happy to announce, Ms. Classic, that there is a men's and women's locker room and in each one there is a jacuzzi. So when you come to America, we have a jacuzzi for you. <laughs> I will appreciate that. That's my peace place. If I don't go to Peace Garden of Moms in us, Peace Garden, I would prefer to stay in the jacuzzi. Okay, but you have to share with the students too. It's there for everybody. <laughs> They'll have special hours. And and in this building, there's a the big, the big um uh, biggest studio had been used at one point in history for a racquetball court, and they have a sign over it that says Supreme Court. So we're going to keep that sign. But so that, that's what this week was for me, mm. is getting ready for Margot Fontaine's birthday and the announcements around that, and, and our hopefully soon graduation out of COVID lockdown into our new facility and being able to start having classes in person. I, I teach 17 classes a week online, but boy, would I love for one of them to be in person because I miss being in the studio with the kids. I really miss it. Well, that sounds like a lot. And I'm sure that Lungani also has entertainment news to add here. Lungani, what's going on? Can we have some entertainment news from you? I believe it's coming. My name is Makala Meketi and I am the presenter for Faces of Z Models. and I am the presenter for the face of Z models yay yay this is a beautiful show and this is how it's gonna happen we are going to profile and present 15 beautiful girls who are fighting to be faces of the Z models now before I do that let me just take you through of who Smuckling is I'm a mother of three beautiful girls and I am also a wife, I'm married to a very handsome guy, guys. I'm a very handsome guy. And also, I'm a plus size model, a brand ambassador, and I'm a creativist. I'm in the creative space and I work with artists to make sure that their work is recognized. competition we had more than 45 participants who wanted to be part of the competition but we have selected the best 15 models who are going to join the show I'm going to introduce the first challenge let me just give you an example of what I'm talking about check this out our next challenge is called like my pick oh yeah why don't you like my picture on this challenge, models are going to post their pictures and the most liked picture will win a gift from the sponsors. So if you know the models and you follow them, make sure that you like their picture because that will take them through to the next challenge. Let's do that. I am Unatu Bobani, I'm 17 years old and I'm a student. I am confident and I have positive energy. Well, my name is Wichiro Adawapare, currently staying in Soweto Needles. I am a law student at Shunisa and the founder of the Fungo I am a 19 years old from Soweto Dikruf. Why should I win this competition? It's because I'm unique and vibrant. 
name is Nina Chapman. and I'm in the Z Models production. Hashtag Z Models. Hi guys, my name is Nina Chapman and I'm a TV. I'm one of the face of Z Models. Hashtag Z Models. Hi guys, my name is Naledi Lemon and I'm in the Z Model production. Hey guys, my name is Mbali Shamin Kutubi and I'll be the face of Z Models. We have come to the end of the show, but before I do that, I'd like to thank our sponsors who have made this show possible. We have Mzanti Local Brand Online Store, Walifatika. We also have Ras BTs and REO SA and Amakunju.com. Thank you so much. And if you'd like to know more about the show, follow us on social media, both Instagram and Facebook under Siega Productions. Let's do this again next week, same time, same place. Remember to tune in on Diverse TV for more information. video where they capture anything relevant that is happening in their communities and we are testing their presenting skills let me just give you an example of what I'm talking about check this out Welcome back to everyone. This is the one and only Queen of Global Sundays. I would like to welcome everyone, including our special guest, Dr. Tina Mthope, the author, poet, a playwright, director, performer, and the storyteller. A great mother who values and respects culture and the mother for her beautiful and intelligent daughter, uh, Noma Kwezi. And uh, she's the great, inspire, inspiring, and ins insp inspirative uh, child that I've ever met. Mam I was honored uh, to be part of your album, the third track, Ilotiko, in the track Africa Mother Mary. Let's welcome you to our Global Sunday. Thank you, thank you so much. Greetings to, to everyone. And um, it's a great um, honor to be part of this Global Sunday and to share this platform with all of you. It's, it's, it's just, it's, it's amazing. And I'm hoping that uh, as we share our stories, as we get to know each other, we make the world a much more um, comfortable and habitable space, whether you're in Germany or America or South Africa, whether you're in South America, whether you're in, in Angola, in Egypt, all over the world, <laughs> I say stories power the world because every living being has got a story to tell. When we don't share our stories, we, we are not connected. Some people work together in the same office every single day, but they don't know much about each other. They've been thinking, the one who's always, we always meet them, they arrive late in the <laughs> elevator. The one who's always um, um, coming out with um, sneakers and then they've got high heels and they're always talking about um, different people. They even don't know their names because they don't know each other's stories. Once you know somebody's story, you get to know them. And some people say, but, but I, I'm not good. I don't know how to tell a story. I don't have, and there's nobody who does not have a story. If you have lived, if you have had experiences, if you have been to a school, you've got stories to tell. And then you've been to university even, you've, you've been to the workplace, it doesn't matter what your experience is. You've been hoeing in the fields all day. You've been collecting clay to make clay pots. You've got stories to tell on how to make those clay pots because ceramic is another sensuous 
amazing, exquisite art form. So every different genre of the creative arts I celebrate. I'm not a very good dancer, but when I hear there's a dance production, I'm right there. I buy my ticket, I go and watch dance. I love film. I love the different ways of expressing that people use that I think um, we need to, 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 to have a more collaboration in the creative arts and they're all stories. It's wonderful, you know, I, um, I first met you uh, about two years ago now. I was in yeah. South Africa and, um, and my son had organized a, a tour. I was there on official business for, for my academy. And um, all of a sudden one day we got in a car and we started driving and driving and we drove into this park and then another park and we were looking and then finally we were looking for the storytelling tree. And all of a sudden this beautiful tree came into view and it was across the way and we all said it's got to be that so we drove over <laughs> there and when you you know i've been in many theaters and i've been with a lot of uh, big celebrities that um that they can fill the hall but this was outdoors and when you took that stage you filled all of nature i've never seen that before in my life and you included everybody. And also in that group were all kinds of different people, including the Consul General of the United States um, Diplomatic yes. Corps. Yes. And she kicked off her shoes, she leaned back, everybody relaxed and everybody shared. It was, it was so magical. And to this day, it was one of my top three memories of that trip that I, you know, my first trip to, to your beautiful country. And I can't wait to come back and, and as we develop our own program there, I'm sure we'll run into each other and I really look forward to that. Very much so, very much so. One of the, the most exciting things was uh, having the, the, the desire to find a space that will host what um, I'm calling a kind of a home of storytelling and uh, the storytelling tree is an old wild fig tree. It's in the bluff show grounds. When I asked the city uh, council to, to let me use the space to let our organization, the Namasigo Arts and Heritage Trust, to use the space for monthly events, it took a while for them to click, what am I asking for? Until I told them, listen, I'm not leaving. I'm staying right here. I'm not leaving your offices. If you want me to spend the night, I can. So eventually I got a yes and um, we started um, having stories told under the storytelling tree and all kinds of people. The most amazing thing about um, having a venue like that, it's outdoors, we are celebrating mother nature, but it is the original space of meeting whether people are meeting to discuss the most important things in, in the village, whether it is the chief deciding on a case, whether it is um, lovers just hanging out and you know, I, I, I feel you. When you touch me, I, I don't know what to do. And uh, you know, and under a, a tree, there's so much that has happened. And then under a tree, people have had picnics. Under a tree, people have had the most amazing performances long before huge auditoriums and um, very prestigious venues um, where we see there's places to perform where you have what status. But I've performed in all those places. I've done the Royal Albert Hall in London. I've done the Lincoln Center in, in New York. I performed at the Kennedy Center in Washington, DC. I performed in Köln at the Opera House there. I've done Dresden. I've performed all over the world. I've performed in Argentina in one of the most exquisite, but when I'm under the storytelling tree, there's something that is fundamental, that is um, so unique and, and yet very universal very humble, they're very down to earth. And I feel so blessed to be able to host so many different types of performers and speakers and historians under the storytelling tree. Well, it's a, it's a big pleasure to have you here and talk about these things. And what an artist can do is create a spotlight on something. And then through this lens, all of a sudden you discover a whole other world. We will be talking about more of this, but for now, I would like to know what the news will bring. Nungani. Okay, so 
Actually, that's going to go to me. Okay. Uh, you see, well, I'm, I have my big clock here, but I also have my schedule, but I knew that this, this will happen <laughs> because Rungani <laughs> asked me, you know, to keep the timing and I really wanted to keep the timing, but I keep running over. So, Mr. Laden, <laughs> okay. can you go for the news, please? I'll talk fast. We'll make all the bad news last a very short time. All right. So, everybody, welcome to Global Sunday News. Today is May 9th, 2021. And reporting for GSN, I'm Kenneth Ludden. And happy Mother's Day to everyone. Though there is progress with vaccines, and some parts of the world at least, and the overall situation with COVID is at a crisis level in India as desperate measures are being taken. And as usual, those who make profit from illness and fighting to retain their patent protection while the US and others fight to make the vaccine manufacturing methods available for global mass production. Today's first news segment comes from Adadarana News 24 from Colombo, Sri Lanka. Watch this. Start of the increasing infections, increasing in, infections in, India. in India. Authorities in New Delhi Authorities have the Indian capital's ubiquitous three-wheeled auto rickshaws into makeshift ambulances to ferry COVID-19 patients. With increasing death tolls and new records of infections, the country's health sector expects to see no end in the near future. This auto rickshaw zooming down a street in New Delhi is ferrying a 60-year-old COVID-19 patient and her son to the hospital as some of India's ubiquitous three-wheeled taxis have been turned into makeshift ambulances to help the country's collapsing health care system amid a devastating second wave of the coronavirus. Actual ambulances are hard to come by in India, which reported a record of more than 412,000 new cases and roughly 4,000 deaths on Thursday, dashing hopes that cases were peaking. With ambulance fleets unable to keep up with the surging cases, the Delhi government, with the help of a nonprofit organization, has mobilized more than a dozen auto rickshaws, equipped with hand sanitizers and face masks, while oxygen cylinders are provided on an as-needed basis. Auto rickshaw driver Raj Kumar, who now dons a full PPE suit, has stepped up to ferry patients to and from Delhi's largest hospital, which is overflowing with COVID-19 patients. The auto rickshaw ambulance service, which comes free of cost to those who use it, said it has received requests from other parts of the country to start services there. The virus has spread from cities to villages even less equipped to cope. Limited public health care, including a lack of testing facilities, means the threat is grave in rural areas, home to nearly 70 percent of India's population of 1.3 billion. Data from India's health ministry showed that total infections have passed 21 million as of Thursday, and the overall death toll climbed above 230,000, a tally experts believe vastly underestimates the actual total. Canadian health officials said that they have become the first to approve Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine for ages as young as 12. Vaccinations have ramped up in Canada in recent months and the government expects to receive at least 10 million vaccines this month. More than 34% of Canadians have received at least one dose. Young Canadians ages 12 to 15 are now eligible for the Pfizer coronavirus vaccine. The country's health ministry finding it safe and effective for this age group after an independent scientific review. According to Canada's chief medical advisor, roughly one-fifth of all cases of COVID-19 in the country have occurred in children and teenagers. Previously authorized for anyone over 16, regional officials are now moving to expand their rollouts. The move follows Pfizer's publication in March of preliminary results of a vaccine study showing the jab to be 100% effective in adolescents between 12 and 15 in a phase 3 trial. In the study's more than 2,000 U.S. volunteers, there were no cases of COVID-19 in the vaccinated group compared to 18 cases in the group that received a placebo. The neighboring U.S. may soon follow in Canada's footsteps. The country's Food and Drug Administration is expected to authorize Pfizer's vaccine for 12 to 15-year-olds as early as next week. 
the European Union backed a U.S. proposal to discuss waiving patent protections for COVID-19 vaccines, but drug makers and some other governments opposed the idea, saying it, that it would not solve global inoculation shortages. Let's cross over to other than a World News Pressure correspondent Prashani Rodrigo from Helsinki in Finland. For more, Prashani. Yes, Shanali. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen expressed willingness to explore a waiver after President Joe Biden promoted the plan reversing the United States' position, adding that a patent waiver is one possible means of increasing manufacture and access to vaccines. Biden's administration endorsed negotiations at the World Trade Organization to gain global agreement. WTO Director General Nyogi Okanji Vela told member states that she warmly welcomed the U.S. move, claiming the need to respond urgently to COVID-19 because of the increasing number of deaths. Despite that enthusiasm, drug makers who stand to lose revenue if they are stripped of patent rights to COVID-19 vaccines and other critics found flaws in the proposal. The complexities of manufacturing means free access to intellectual property is not enough to immediately increase vaccine production, they said. Moderna waived its patent rights in October and noted the lack of companies able to rapidly manufacture a simple vaccine and securely approval for it. In the long term, a waiver would discourage pharmaceutical companies from rapidly responding to future global health threats with large investments, some said. Germany, the EU's biggest economic power and home to a large pharmaceutical sector, rejected the idea, saying vaccine shortages were due to a limited production capacity and quality standards rather than patent protection issues. Back to you, Shenali. Thank you. That was other than a World News Special Correspondent Prashani Rodrigo reporting from Helsinki in Finland. After a year of fighting a deadly wave of the pandemic, Americans across the country have succeeded in creating community immunity, an effort which allows families to reunite under the protection of vaccines. Tonight as U.S. COVID cases and deaths drop to their lowest levels since last fall, San Francisco may now be leading the nation in community immunity, a national model for its vaccination rate. Nearly 75% of those eligible here have at least one dose, already higher and two months ahead of the president's goal of 70%. After early vaccination outreach, COVID cases in the city are in a free fall, averaging 26 infections a day. Today, San Francisco and Los Angeles joining Chicago and New York, dramatically easing restrictions. With Pfizer announcing they'll help vaccinate Olympians before they arrive in Tokyo, Moderna confirms early trial results show its booster shot is highly effective against variants. <laughs> Tonight, vaccines are bringing loved ones back together. In New Jersey, more than 100 families separated because of the virus, now reunited because of vaccinations. <laughs> Moments of joy after a year of sorrow. Yes, you see, even though we have made great strides and there is very good news on the horizon, it is still just so important to act responsibly. Get your vaccine, keep social distancing and where you can't wear a mask. It's not for you only, it's for everybody. And think of all of the mothers and the grandmothers out there that on this day can't be visited because people can't come close to them get your vaccines. And now we're going to go to a music video brought to you by Global Sunday. You are watching Global Sunday. Play with my private party. She wanna play with my private party. Play with my private party. She wanna play with my private party. Play with my private party. She wanna play with my private party. Play with my private party. 
silly thing, silly thing, silly thing. I feel I love the booty, the booty and everything. Sweetie, big booty, she a big shot. She a rima with a big pack. Yeah, she pulling now with a big pack. Now go on the senorita. She finna go shopping in a Gucci. I tell her, na na na, me wanna wah wah wah. Show the big mama, me and my bob man. Silly thing, silly thing, silly thing. She wanna play with my private party. Play with my private party. She wanna play with my private party. Play with my private party. She wanna play with my private party. Play with my private party. She wanna play with my private party. Play with my private party. Esse teu vai bem, me deixou muito bem. Chega aqui moço, teu toque gostoso Na cama eu mando, quero ser teu comando És cada vez mais safado, mas não seja malvado Quer brincar com meu corpo, sim Quer entrar mais no fundo, yeah She wanna play with my brother battle Play with my brother battle She wanna play with my brother battle Play with my private party. She wanna play with my private party. Play with my private party. She wanna play with my private party. Play with my private party. So welcome back everybody after the news. Thank you very much and uh, some music clip. Today, our special guest, Dr. Vlima, I wanted to congratulate you. This year is 20 years of your project, the mother of books literacy campaign that when I've seen the film about it, it says you wanted to make 12 months only. It's 20 years. That is impressive. It's just amazing. And I had the chance to dive into a whole world of the creations you have been part of in the, in the last few days. And it is, it is really astonishing, you know, the different works. And each one is so special, like the Prisoners of Hope, where yes. you were speaking about how you feel, how angry it made you to see what these people had to go through. And yet they came back to the prison and they celebrated. Yeah. And it is very special to have you here today. And wow. there we could speak for hours and days. And I feel very blessed to be part of a world where we can exchange and share actually. And as artists, there's so much to say. And I'm also thinking about the people out there and I want to name three of them um, and give a shout out to us, to Royal Sun. Thank you, um, Royal Sun for, for joining us today. And then Miss Classic, can you help me? But is that right? Nom Corsi Solu. Yes. Oh, Miss Classic is muted. Ah, unfortunately, her voice is muted. Yes. Okay. So, um, and I will also. She's saying Happy Mother's Day to everyone, and Lucia Tabi also. Thank you, Lucia Tabi. Big shout out to you, and I'm sure we all have a lot of questions um, for you, Dr. Mvlopi. And I will put the first one here. So um, we were wondering, um, it is a rare artist who continues to innovate beyond international recognition. And you just mentioned the many places you've been to. And 
the most that we're interested is what drives you. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks again. Um, for me, I need to believe in what I'm doing. I need to love what, even as a child, when you asked me to do something, I always had the why. One of those uh, problematic children who needed to know why she has to do something. And I always was very, very curious. And um, so that what, what drives me is curiosity and the love for my, not only my people, my biological family, but for my people, for my country, my continent. I'm not only an artist who travels all over the world just to travel chasing fame or anything like that. I'm a cultural ambassador. I know that I represent my people everywhere I go. I've got to do the best that I can at any given time, whether I go there as an author, whether I go as, an, as a, per, a performer and actress in a play, whether I'm doing storytelling or working with the universities. I've worked with Brandeis University. I've worked with uh, uh, Kyoto Saika University in, in Japan. All over the world where I'm going, I know that I come from the proper family. When I talk about my people, I know that um, I, I, I come from a place where my umbilical cord is buried, where I was um, taught to have a sense of self, to be proud of my background, but to be humble enough to honor anybody else's culture that I come into contact with. So for me, what drives me is curiosity, is one share where I come from and the skills that I have acquired over the years, but to make a difference in other people's lives. I'm not here just to live and eat and sleep. I'm here to make a difference. Mm. This is very good. Profound. Yes, Mam Tina. Um, there's something that I was uh, concerned about as we were, we are celebrating the, the nomination of our king, Mrs. Zulu. Uh, how is your feeling about him? How, what is your take about our king, the new king that is uh, nominated in the Zulu kingdom? Ngiabong. It is extremely important for us to know that we've got different me? levels of knowing everything, the proper way of doing things, the protocol on what um, the exact way uh, of succession uh, or of when the next king is, is to be uh, chosen and uh, what are the, the, the steps to be followed. When you don't know enough about that, I think people should refrain from talking and making comments about th things they are not totally clear about. I'm grateful that um, there is somebody who has been nominated, who has been uh, groomed over the years to take this position. It's extremely important. And, um, and I'm very, very sad at the loss of the Queen Mother. Mm. I think she was just an amazing, amazing woman. We, we sadly didn't know, didn't get enough media coverage about the work that she was doing until it was too late, until she had passed on, we could not come into contact with. And now her son, her firstborn son, um, mm. Bayede, who, who king, um, uh, Mrs. Zulu. Mrs. Zulu. When we ask um, this new king, we have to listen. We have got to learn how things are going before we mm. say, okay, I hear this has happened. This has happened. This has happened. A lot of that we hear from the news. Mm. We need to wait and listen yeah. and learn before we pretend that we know it all. No, I do not like that. Well, if you mention to listen and to discover and thinking about the media, I find it essential what you have been pushing the agenda of, of literacy. And I brought one of the books because I'm a lover of the library. And this uh, is a, an Italian artist, it's called Piero della Francesca. And yes. he painted incredible things in Arezzo. 500 years yes. ago and I can go to the library, you know, and I can go there and get this book and I can look at those things that I can't go there now. And, and I'm, 
I'm traveling in my mind to these places, you know, to these paintings. Mm, wow, mm, mm. that's beautiful. What amazes me is that, you know, there's people that, no, I can't go and buy all the stuff that I would like to buy, but you know, like there's Pharaoh Sanders and I can, can get even a vinyl and he's <laughs> almost 90 years old and he made a new record. And then you yes. got another one. This is Wayne Shorter, Wayne Shorter, you know? Yes, he, I know, but yeah. An incredible, and, and I, I put them there and I want to say, this is so important what you're doing. And I was deeply inspired by, by finding out about your work by, by seeing that. So thank you so much for carrying the candle even in those, yes. in those dark times, when yes. some things tend to disappear, it's, it's clearly probably a lot of work, I can mm. imagine. Mm -hmm. I think um, when we are teaching our children the values of our people to have a sense of self and also celebrating our mother tongues, it's extremely mm -hmm. important to have your own mother tongue before you can go out and speak anybody else's language. And mm -hmm. when young people go to school, they need to learn to read and write. Once you learn to read and write, the world is open to you. You can read about anything. You don't have to be thinking, I, I hear so-and-so says, I I I'm not sure you need to read and learn and acquire knowledge and make your own opinion. When we are giving our children education in any country, in any culture, when you give children education, you are arming them for success. Once you've done that, you, you, you can watch them unfurl their wings and take to the skies. When we allow mm -hmm. our children to do that, we can guide them now and again, guide them now and again, but they will go out and grab so many experiences and the knowledge, we will stand back and be proud. And think, hey, boo, that is my child. That's my daughter, that's my son. They will amaze you because no child is born empty. They are not empty vessels for us to fill in. The children, they come with their gifts that the Almighty has given them, that uh, the ancestral spirits are sharing with them. You know, Ben Okri from Nigeria, from, he, he's, he says something very, very special. One of the most um, um, phenomenal authors, a multi-award winner, he says, a nation is as weak or as powerful as the stories they choose to tell to themselves or to one another. I repeat, a nation is as weak or as powerful as the stories they choose to tell to themselves or to one another. That's awesome because we should choose and tell amazing stories that inspire one another. When we do that, we, we, we keep on hearing these stories. We, we keep on feeling stronger. When you take multivitamins, you don't take them just for Monday and Tuesday and you stop. Stories are the multivitamins today, tomorrow, and the further future that we are striving for. You know, that's really amazing. It, it brings me to a question with what you said, um, people, about the books. Um, you know, it is, it is so important, the work you're doing to make South Africa a reading nation. And I have a, sort of a cluster of questions because it's like a diamond. It has so many facets you know, what have you accomplished so far? What are the plans? And most importantly, in a venue like this that reaches all over the world, what can we do? And what can the people at home do that will help with the, the mission that you have that you've stuck with all of these years? Thank mm -hmm. you. What we've been doing as an organization, the Namasigo Arts and Heritage Trust, and then having a flagship project like Nozi Nwadi, mother of books. Nozi Nwadi was my great grandmother, Umam Tunu. She couldn't read or write, but she collected anything with words on it, put them in a suitcase. Sadly, when that suitcase disappeared um, over the years, I didn't know about it. This was before I was born even. And then when I heard about this great grandmother of mine, I thought, that's it, I'm gonna wake up the suitcase. And so that's mm. how our literacy campaign started. And I thought 12 months, definitely. I'm gonna work for the whole 12 months. And then I thought I'm gonna do it for a whole 18 months. 
The next thing you know is five, six, seven, eight, nine years, and now we're celebrating 20 years of Nozimuati, Mother of Books Literacy Campaign. To this, this year, 2021, we are preparing, collecting books and more books. We are going to be renovating a library at a, at a school in Chatsworth. It's called Gwavulin the School of the Deaf. I adore children. And their principal is my kind of woman. She's got fire. And those are the kind yeah. of schools I work with. When you've got a leader who's got fire, you speak my mm -hmm. language. And so that's one of the schools. I just visited another school in Umlazi the, the, the other day, and they say they would like to work with our organization, and they don't even have a, a library box. We, we've got work to do, huh? 2022, we need to fundraise because books are expensive. I wish there would be a removal of tax from books so that they could be more affordable. So when we go to these places, we renovate a room and we put up the shelves and we fill them up with books and we make library after library and other organizations are doing similar work. But for me, I think everybody must understand that when you are doing a certain type of work and other people are doing something similar, let's celebrate one another because the most Amen. important people are the future generations, are our children. My quotation, the thing that is my motto, something that gets me out of bed in days when it's hard to wake up. I say, until we see a brighter future in our children's eyes, not much of what we do today has any value until we see a brighter future in our children's eyes, not mm. much of what we do today has any value value let's strive and so in our organization we do we strive to see that brighter future in our children's eyes because we're not here forever they mm. inherit and then they take things into the future our organization also has got the annual storytelling festival Nozinwadi uh, storytelling festival is in october and um on the 24th of october that's my birthday we decided on when i turned 60 i thought I said, I'm grown up enough now. I will declare my birthday National Storytelling Day. And so mm. people embraced it. So since 2019, on the 24th of October at 11 o'clock sharp, people start telling stories all over South Africa, in the Western Cape, in Northern KZN, in Free State, all over. And so in October, we have our storytelling festival. Some of the events under the storytelling tree, other events in different venues, but we started something in 2020 because of COVID-19. People mm. from Argentina, from India, from Canada, from USA, from Uganda, in London, people sent us videos of themselves telling stories. We got a company, um, Video Vision, one of our sister organizations, they edited and made a one hour, 10 minute long film. And we had a screening of the storytellers from all over the world and we watched them telling stories, participating at our storytelling festival. Other people are prepare, preparing to do exactly that this year. And if you're living in Colombia, maybe you live in Texas, maybe hey. you live in Alaska, <laughs> maybe you live in Holland, maybe you live in Sweden and you want to be in mm -hmm. our festival, but you think, hey, those flights are too expensive. Hey, this ugly man called Corona is stopping me in my tracks. Send a video. <laughs> We're gonna edit those, we're gonna have an evening of screening and we're gonna watch you and we're gonna celebrate you. October, mm -hmm. coming the festival of Nozinwadi storytelling and book celebration. That is hey, incredible. We'll be there. I have, um, I have mm -hmm. something that, that you may not know about from America. In America, books are sort of disappearing and bookstores are closing all over the place. What we've done with our organization, we have a, we have a, a fine arts library what we have done with those is when they go into a, a sale where they sell every book for five cents, we will go and buy, you know, as much as we can afford. Of course, we're the art, so we can't do it. But wow. then we make a deal with them that whatever is left over, instead of them paying to take it to the dump, they pay to bring it to us. And so we have a huge collection of about 6,000 books and wow. what I will do, and we've been rejecting books that weren't, that didn't fit. I will now I'll accept all of the books. We will work out a way to get those to you and your organization. Because these are bookstores that are going out of business and they're just mm. going to throw them away. And so we can use this, this great 
tragedy in America for the benefit of all of those children. Absolutely, absolutely. One of the things the Gardner Museum did, because I've been an artist in residence at the Gardner Museum um, a few times, um, Ms. Jonetta Tinker from the education department of the Gardner Museum, they started collecting books for us and um, they sent three huge drums uh, to South Africa and they arrived at the harbor and they came, oh my goodness, you, you, we sent the books to the different schools. One of my favorite days was taking the books to a school on top of Umchazi River near Inanda. What a day, what a celebration to donate those books there. The children were ecstatic because they had a, a, a library that almost had the books, but they didn't have much. And so whenever we can get these donations, it's no use to saying we want our children to read when there are no books, but also, this whole hype about uh, having, um, you can read on cell phones, you can read on, on the computer, you can uh, read um, on, on, on the Kindle, um, whatever these electronic things, not everybody has got them. Not everybody has got them. The same thing about, uh, about um, people saying they can do online um, classes. Some children can't access that. They don't have data. They don't have uh, access to, 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 to these platforms. So books, don't need a battery, they don't need airtime, they don't need anything, just get the book. And uh, once you get on a book, you can fly to any country in the whole world, take to the skies, yes. you don't even need a ticket, huh? just get on board. There, you know, there's one very short scientific fact, I know Miss Classic wants to chime in, and that is what they discovered. If you have a child and you're reading the book, if you have the child physically turn the page, what they discovered is when your arm crosses the middle of your body, whatever you've just heard or uh, taken in gets recorded into the memory of your brain. And so, so making the children turn the page makes them absorb everything. So, and no Kindle or computer can do that. Uh, Miss Classic, I'm, I'm sorry to have cut you off, but... Um, <laughs> no, that's where I come in. You know, today I, I'm, I'm, you know, the levels are too serious because I, I used to have the young ones, and so where I, 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 I dance around. So today it's a little bit formal because you're back and Mantina is around, and I'm so excited to have her. And uh, the question for me, um, actually, I would like to thank her first because. You know, the, the only thing that we need when we're under COVID-19, the only thing that we needed uh, from us to be inspired and to be kept motivated and uh, to stand on our own, own two feet um, was reading books. So I know, Mam uh, I might uh, not have been affected too much during the COVID-19 because we attended some few events uh, we were following the protocols uh, uh, of COVID-19 uh, under the tree. Uh, but I want to, if COVID-19 is coming back, the levels again, if it's a, what, the fourth wing, wing or, or it's fifth one, uh, which book uh, can, Dodela, Mama, Waming, Tandayo, which book can you uh, uh, prefer? for a person who's sitting at the home, which, which one is the best inspirational book? I have a book here written by one of the people that you inspired. Um, I, 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 and I wanted to take a guess when I finish here. I will just um, need the answer. Uh, how did COVID-19 affected you? And then when you finish uh, answering that question, I would like to recite this poem and then you need to uh, uh, play a quiz and tell me uh, who is this young lady that you inspired to write this poem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With, um, with, with uh, thank you, thank you, Siswongi. Um, one of the most amazing things with, uh, with COVID-19 is that it forced people to stay inside to be with one another. You couldn't say, I'm late, I've got to run quickly and you eat and don't finish your food and drink half of the coffee or the tea and then you're out of the door uh, and you're gonna go and sit in the traffic. You couldn't do any of that, you had to stay home. You mm -hmm. had to eat and finish your food. You mm -hmm. had to talk to one another and look at each other. 
And so some people were getting to relearn how to be together, but also mm -hmm. having to work from home, those who were not used to working from home. And for us, we were lucky because the Tsunamasiga office is a home office. And mm -hmm. another thing is that I love gardening. And the mm -hmm. first two weeks of the lockdown, I just went into the garden and I just worked like mad. Gardening kind of um, heals your soul. There's something about touching the soil and um, uh, remembering that the Almighty makes every little seed in the ground to, to, to stretch out, to reach out and, and seek the light of the sun and germinate. And then it grows and grows. And so when I was working in the garden and my daughter Kwezi joined me and we working and working, mm -hmm. we started painting on the walls because the, the Peace Garden is a very colorful space and doing mm -hmm. mosaic, but also when we were um, doing all of this, we were getting into uh, what, what, what is gonna continue happening in the organization, preparing, and we started writing. I decided mm -hmm. that I need to collect the stories, the photographs, the, 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 the profiles of the different storytellers alive in South Africa today. And so that's how this book was born. And mm -hmm. uh, we were lucky to be supported by arts and culture. And um, we invited the storytellers, the book that I finally finished, it's called Our Storytelling Tree, like a family tree. This mm. book is, um, is about storytellers who are doing amazing things in different parts of South Africa. And one of them is one of my amazing sisters, uh, Shiro's uh, Sindiwe Magona. Mm -hmm. She writes unbelievably beautifully she narrates and tells stories she's in this book i'm so happy that she was able to do that we've got omato dandaguse obongi swakota we've got oh nomsa mtalose we've got people like nogutula msimang so the lady mm. who designed the book was wow. just went to town designing mm. the book you yeah. got him she just did such a good job. And working on this book, Noma Kwezi helped me a lot with a lot of the research. This lady, she's in wow. a wheelchair. She's full yeah. of positivity, like you won't believe, um, um, from Johannesburg. And um, Cindy Mkaza, she was my student when I did my residency at University mm. of Cape Town. And now mm. she's taken to the skies. And it just fills my heart with joy. And to think that this book is also going to be available on, on, on online via Amazon. It means that people are gonna read about these storytellers and know what's going on in South Africa. So writing, that's what happened. And also mm -hmm. I participated in quite a few international conferences on Zoom. And mm -hmm. also I was part of the, uh, the Medellin International Poetry Festival online. And a lot of things have happened but also we continue doing small events, um, taking care of the restrictions, of course, of the lockdown regulations. I mm. think um, it's important for us to, to read the different books. Sisindu Magona, as I'm talking about her now, she's released a, a new book, a brand new book. It's called When the Village Sleeps. Mm. You know, mm. we often mm. say it takes a village to raise a child. And yes. a lot of horrible things happen. You, some people who are living in America, you see all of those school shootings. Somebody comes with a gun, boom, boom, boom. They just shoot children and you go to different countries. The things that happen, but the village is sleeping. We're not taking care of one another. Mm -hmm. This is an amazing book oh. by Dr. Cindy Wey Magona. It's called When the Village Sleeps. That's one of the brand new books. I can't to sink my teeth into it and learn as much mm -hmm. as I can. And of course, another one of my favorite authors who's so inspirational, Paulo Coelho. Yay! Awesome. You got Pablo Neruda from Chile. Wow. So many Man. writers from different parts of the world, you know? Yeah. Yo, All you right. Know. Thank you. You, so much. Lot, you don't seem to have a lot of sleep uh, according mm -hmm. to all the works you've been involved in, seven honorary doctorates and still counting. Well, respect, respect. Mm -hmm. And you're sharing your gift with mm -hmm. the world because that is one of the most important things is giving time to people, even mm -hmm. when you are very famous and a celebrity. And it's special to us that you're giving your time today that we can share it. And we will now check in to Mr. Laden again to see the news and then we will come back and we have more questions waiting for you. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, thank you. I'm Ken Ludden, and this is the second segment of our news today. Aside from COVID, there are many critical issues facing the human race. And these are not issues that are brief or small. They are issues of survival. They call them existential issues. That means you may not exist if the issue is not resolved. Governments have lost their place. Individuals think that they are the government for their own enrichment or praise, no. In the second segment, we're going to look in at some of these existential critical issues going on today. Watch this. Participations of the G7 ministerial of the Korean Peninsula. Korean Seoul's FM called for cooperation with COVID-19 vaccines. The Indian foreign minister participated online due to the coronavirus outbreak among his delegation. The top diplomats of the group of seven countries have expressed their concerns over the human rights violations in North Korea and urged the North to refrain from provocative actions and to return to talks. They have also called for a strengthening of cooperation to respond to the North's cyber attacks, which fund its weapons programs. The ministers also expressed concerns over some countries not enforcing international sanctions placed on the regime. The joint statement issued at the end of the G7 Foreign and Development Ministers' Meeting in London on Wednesday reads, We call on North Korea to refrain from provocative actions and to engage in a diplomatic process with the explicit goal of denuclearization. We remain committed to the goal of complete, verifiable and irreversible abandonment of all of North Korea's unlawful weapons of mass destruction and ballistic missile programs in accordance with relevant UN Security Council resolution. Notably, the term complete, verifiable and irreversible abandonment emerged, replacing the initial CVID in which the last C stands for dismantlement and interchangeably it also meant denuclearization. The two terms CVIA and CVID mean the same, but CVIA, which was first used in a UN Security Council resolution in 2006, is thought to make North Korea less resistant. The term CVID, first used by the George W. Bush administration, had implied the U.S.'s unwilling attitude towards the issue of denuclearization. Delegations from South Korea, India, Australia and South Africa attended as guests at the meeting. According to the South Korean Foreign Ministry, Minister Chong Yong had shared the country's COVID-19 quarantine response measures during the meeting and called for the G7 country's cooperation for fair, equitable access to vaccines. The ministry also said potential agendas for the upcoming G7 summit in June had been discussed, including a collective response against climate change. Indian Foreign Minister Subramanyam Jai Shankar participated in the minister's meeting via video link after some members of his delegation were confirmed to have COVID-19 after arriving at the conference site. The delegation team is currently in quarantine. U.S. President Joe Biden is planning massive renovation efforts after the disasters of Mexico, with many praising the effort to better develop national infrastructure. The Republicans disapprove of the taxing wealthier companies of the initiative. Trickle down ain't working very well, man. We got a bill from the bottom and up and the middle out. With an aging bridge as his backdrop in Lake Charles, Louisiana, U.S. President Joe Biden took his infrastructure plan to the southern historically Republican U.S. state on Thursday, where he made the case that tax hikes on corporations and the wealthy would be to the benefit of all Americans. Biden wants to hike the corporate tax rate to between 25 and 28 percent and use some of that to help pay for water and storm projects in cities like deeply conservative Lake Charles, which was battered by hurricanes just last year. Louisiana is the latest stop on what the White House bills as the Getting America Back on Track tour to promote Biden's $2.25 trillion infrastructure spending plan. Biden's push to spend more federal money on schools, roads, job training and other public works and tax the wealthiest Americans and companies to pay for it faces stiff opposition from Republican lawmakers. U.S. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell predicted last week that Biden's infrastructure plan would not get support from Republican lawmakers and said he plans to fight Democrats, quote, every step of the way. The White House is betting trips like this will build public support for Biden and his spending proposals, 
Even among Republican voters who backed former President Donald Trump, who continues to hold enormous sway over his party. In the closely divided Senate, Biden would need every Democratic vote if no Republicans support the bill. In Lake Charles, Biden said he was meeting with Republicans in Congress to see how much they're willing to go for and what compromises they can offer. Colombia's government invited protest leaders to a dialogue in an attempt to calm tensions following more than a week of deadly demonstrations against the president Ivan Duke. The demonstrators throughout the area demanded for better health care and education facilities. A rally outside the Colombian consulate in Mexico City, crowds in Madrid and Pamplona, all turning out in solidarity with their fellow countrymen and women in Colombia. Thousands of anti-government protesters have been gathering there daily to demand better health and education services, as well as plans to tackle inequality and poverty. Smaller, scattered groups turned out for Thursday's protests and roadblocks in Bogota. Unions, students and indigenous groups, among others, called their supporters to join. As night fell, the movement became a candlelight vigil for those who have lost their lives in police crackdowns. Official figures say 24 people have been killed since the start of the protests. Some NGOs, though, estimate a higher death toll. The protests started with the government's proposed tax plan. President Ivan Duque scrapped that idea on Sunday and his finance minister also resigned. But these gestures have done little to calm the growing discontent. In a bid to break up the blockades, the government announced on Thursday that it's ready to sit down in talks with protest leaders. The German government has announced that the military cooperation in the European Union will get a boost at the 27-nation bloc in admitting for the first time outside partners such as the United States, Canada and Norway into one of its projects. For more on this, we have other than a World News Special Correspondent, Inuka Ponzer, who joins us now from Cleve in Germany. Inuka? Yes, Shanali. German Defense Minister Andre Kram Karrenbauer said they will take further steps to build a common strategic compass, but most of all will be making a quantum leap in concrete corporations ahead of the first in-person meeting with her EU counterparts in over a year in Brussels. The EU project on military mobility is designed to facilitate the movement of troops across Europe, something NATO deemed as crucial in the event of conflict with Russia. While NATO has spearheaded efforts to reduce the conflict in regulation across 27 EU countries for transfers of US troops, the EU has a budget to back the reconstruction of bridges too weak for tanks and has more power over changing block-wide rules. The decision to be formally taken by EU defence ministers means NATO members Norway, Canada and the United States will also become the first foreign countries to collaborate in the EU's Permanent Structured Cooperation Act which aims to deepen defence ties. Military mobility aims at improving the exchange of information between EU countries and cutting red tape at borders, including harmonising custom rules to allow for swift deployments and easier transport of military equipment. Back to you, Shanali. Thank you. That was other than a World News Special Correspondent Inuka Ponzo reporting from Cleve in Germany. A massive police operation against drug traffickers in Brazilian favela left 25 people dead, turning the impoverished Rio de Janeiro neighborhood into a battlefield and the drawing condemnation of human rights. Incomprehension and anger in this Rio de Janeiro favela. Some 200 police officers descended on the residential area in the early hours of Thursday morning. Heavily armed, they came looking for suspected gang members. The operation became one of the deadliest the city has ever seen, one that's left families in shock. This resident says a stranger was killed in her home. Jaca Rosinho is one of Rio's most popular slums. It's also the stronghold of Brazilian criminal organization Red Command. Police defended their actions by saying their operation was to prevent the dangerous gang from recruiting teens. The local police chief added that Thursday's incursion was in line with a Supreme Court ruling, one that banned raids on favelas during the pandemic except in emergencies. 
but community leaders and rights groups remain wary. NGO Human Rights Watch has called for an independent investigation into the killings. You are watching Global Sundays. I just want to introduce you guys to my music video. Sata so much old. The music video was shot in October 2020. It was released in December 2020. Um, shooting so much old music video was so much fun. Lots of experience from from the crew to everybody who was there. Why the title so much old is that um I've been inspired by uh her a lot of work um. Shoma Josie herself, she's been um, doing well, you know, she's now international, you know, so um, from me, Smoochie, I just want to say thank you for watching Global Sunday. Peace. Oh, oh, smooth records. Yeah, Smoochie the real G. <laughs> yellow, yellow. Yellow, 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 yellow. She told my girl, a very pretty girl. My baby girl, can I be your man? No, gonna be that dumb from Guyana you used to date. Me and me gang, I'm cool and collected. And I know how to treat a lady. Yo, you're the reason why it's smooth. Giga, switch up the flow. Now a baby girl, Josie girl, Mushaya, Ding Dong. No, I gotta find a more. Gonna buy you the wall. Let's forget about them more. Talking about them more. Oh. Don't get baby boy. Same the road to them popo. Never give a F about it, popo. You and I are not me. Welcome back to everyone. Um, happy Mother's Day again uh, to all the women of the world. And don't forget that we are celebrating the African month. So today I'm going to motivate you with regards to uh, culture, our culture. Mam Sina today was saying no culture, no future. And people were saying no culture, no past. So my topic today is culture, my culture. This is why I'm going to recite for you the poem, which I wish Mountain I can answer who is this lady that she inspired to write all these poems. She wrote a book, 
and it's a book of poems. I will read as it says, my Africa, I am the light of Africa. I am the light of the world that shines upon Africa. I shine upon lampstand of Africa, which shines upon the house of all those in Africa. Africa, birthplace of humanity, influence, powerful, weak, brave, freedom fighters. I feel the spirit of Lungwane Kandaba. I feel the spirit of Nomashoshovu Kasenza Nakon. I feel the spirit of Lungwane Lungwane Kandaba. Ulungwane Wombelebed. Ulungwane O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O of King Shaga running through my veins. I'll stop it right there before I can mess it up, before Mantina can give me a, 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 a lash uh, today. <laughs> but I hope I tried a little bit, Mantina. What do you say? <laughs> in fact, I was talking to her earlier this evening. This is in Dokozo Ngobo, a young, very, very talented actress, a singer, poet, she wrote a book called Amaloba, and I'm so proud of her because she always wants to go and interact with young. Yes, that's from the book Amaloba, she, the, the, the tracks. She works with other young ladies in the schools where she has been. She never forgets where she comes from so that young people can see that um, even if I'm still at school, maybe I'm not sure about my choice of career, but there's somebody who's successful who went to this school where I am today. So I love that. Mm -hmm. So that when we inspire, the, she's younger than me, but she's older than those who are in school today who look up to her. Thank you very much, Mamtena, for winning the prize. You have to get a prize for this. Yes. And she's an inspirational to me. She's also acting in the uh, Deb and Jen and in all yes. other movies that we have in South Africa. So big up to Ntogozo. Uh, yes. Now, uh, can I go on with my motivation, Dungani? <laughs> okay. I was just honoring my, our mother, Dawadela Umamtu Namtope, with that uh, poem that I was reciting. The culture, culture is the way of life, especially uh, the general customs and beliefs of particular group of people. It can be particular sets of customs, morals, uh, also uh, uh, traditional forms, specific times like uh, in a place as well. So culture is very important for us as a nation to celebrate it. Culture consists of activities such as arts and philosophies. Philosophy, uh, we, are, we have a lot of philosophers, which are, Mam Tina is one of them to me, which are considered to be uh, to meaning, who are giving us meaning to our culture. Uh, in terms of pronunciation, my pronunciation is different than Mam Tina's pronunciation when she speaks Zulu and all these uh, vernacular languages, which I supposed to learn from her how to speak. Translations are very important. For an example, today at Inanda 88.4 FM, I tried to, to say Umutu when I was saying the song. Instead of saying Umutu, I said Umutu. So it's very important to pronounce correct as Lungani Kuala is always giving us the lessons here at the Global Sundays. So our culture is not um, uh, per, uh, perceived unless and until we respect it. And uh, I'm proud to be a part of it. I'm proud to be a part of our culture. As I was in Mantina's event, I celebrated my culture like you, nobody can believe it. It is an umbrella term, the word culture, uh, that en en encompasses the social behavior and norms found in the human societies. So culture is very important, especially if we groom or we grow our children with that norm and value of respecting the culture. It is a strength that ties in different, not in similarities. 
and it built up a togetherness to all of us, the culture, because we dance together as we were dancing there. We do all the, 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 the customs that we do together as families. It make us strong together, individual values, norms, a, spe a specific history of our culture as well. And it, it understand each other's culture is very important as a rainbow nation of or, or globally. I won't say of, of South Africa, but globally, it's very important to understand each other's culture so that we, we develop or we build our nations. So culture has an impact of communication. As I was saying, it, it has different cultures. It makes us to, to develop in our communi uh, communication as well. So communities, it was uh, of the beautiful, um, uh, which gives strength, identity, purpose to the people. Culture help us to brand and speak. Uh, that is how we learn how to speak. And also people are interested in our in each in, in individuality uh, culture, in, in individual cultures. It makes it interesting. When you are dressing up in different cultures, it's very interesting. When you are singing different songs, it's very interesting, even to the people that doesn't know your culture. So even the thoughts, the models, the books that Mantina is writing and other authors as well, the books we read and the speeches we hear about our culture, they are developing the nation. So I will encourage everyone to go back to her or his culture and try to look back at what you can develop and know in terms of norms and values and the language, as I was saying, pronunciations of the words. I will also go back to my book as I'm motivating you. I motivate myself as well. So let's go back and be uh, encouraged to know that culture is an art that's elevated to a set of beliefs, culture, uh, grateful, that uh, regret in life. So beautiful, the world in, in diversity of its own people. So culture is beautiful. Let's embrace each other's individuality and be together in uh, perfecting it. Boo, 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 boo. <laughs> Oh, Miss Classic, Miss Classic, you left me speechless and then something happened and the word culture, it's a word, you know, we learned it, we use language, it reminds me of libraries because that's where we can find the books, it also reminds me what you said that we need to connect with each other, we need to communicate because the humans they need to communicate with each other and mm -hmm. we need to be in contact with ourselves, our own culture and mm -hmm. with the culture of others. And there is something that is called responsibility that goes with it. We carry it, you know, we carry mm -hmm. our own culture. We also need to nourish it, as you say, and we need to respect the others. and. You know what the image came up? What is an object without a shadow? In, in humans, in the stories, we say when a person has no shadow, they're not alive. And yeah. <laughs> you know, if you, as a, if you don't have respect culture, you can't see without the shadow. And it includes dark parts as well as visible which is the beauty of a shadow, it covers things. And it also means that there is light because where there is shadow, there is light. And we need to acknowledge these things to, to look at where we have our shadows and where we need to put more light and where we acknowledge it. Thank you very much for this motivation. So important. Amen. Mm. Um, so speaking of culture, um, I, I have a, a long history of do, doing uh, theatrical works based on Tongan culture. Um, and in Tonga, there's a single word 
And that word means at the same time, dance, story, song, and history. Um, and that goes into a whole thing about Queen Salate that I won't go into, but, I, but your work, um, Mamtina, has reached all of the avenues of performance and has been recording the history of South Africa from the indigenous South African people rather than the visitors, we'll call them, the historic visitors to South Africa. Um, I, it leads me to a question because in our culture now, or globally, we now have newer venues as, as social media and video and Zoom, what we're doing right now. You know, we have developed, even as we are babies with Zoom, we've developed an ability to do what we're doing today. It's unbelievable. Yeah. How do you see these newer venues coming into your work as it goes forward in the future and also participating in this global sharing of our stories? Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for these uh, lovely comments and uh, thank you, Miss Classic and uh, people as well. When you talk about a shadow in, um, in Isizulu, we say, Umuntu Oshon Pegile, Unes Tunzi. And that mm. person has got a sense of shadow, a sense of presence and dignity. Mm. And uh, that, that's quite fascinating that you put it like that as well. And you're not even a, a Zulu speaker. So there's such um, a universality in, in the way we perceive um, certain um, specific values. And um, the, this thing about mutual respect as well is something mm. that we are taught from a very, very young age to, to, to say thank you say please yeah. to respect another person and so talking about history history is very close to my heart and uh, many people they go on about uh, they say history is his story and then they come up with her story um but uh, that is english in 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 our languages we don't have he or she and so we with us umlando is umlando um mm. i look at the, the value of this thing called history is something about the history of a person, the history of a family, a community, a, a village, um, a, a country or a continent. And, and, and I think we have um, stressed so much how we write biographies. We make short films or, or documentary, big documentary films about a select important few. And then we make another version of that movie. And then another movie about uh, Malcolm X. And then another movie about Martin Luther King. And then another one about Gandhi. And then another one about Nelson Mandela. And so all of these people, we repeat the same topics over and over. There are so many people in the world. There are so many stories. There's a bigger world out there. So for me, it is important that we at Namasiko, as we are developing the Kumbulani Memory House, which will be our oral history museum, we are talking to ordinary South Africans, telling mm. their stories, because every living being has got that story to tell. And um, when we are recording, some people only want to do the, 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 the audio recording. They don't want to show their faces. That's okay. Your voice is just as powerful. And then there are people who are fine with having, with having a, a camera. Then we have got audio visual. They are coming to the element now of the electronic, of the online platforms. I see no problems in that because you reach other people who would never set foot in our Kumbulani memory house. But because we can put these things online on our YouTube channel, on other channels, because sister organizations must um, uh, share with one another, we must cross pollinate. And whoever has got a sense of loving history and sharing stories will always find something to inspire, to wake up stories in one another. So that's what we are doing. We're doing this work. It will be uh, in, in, a, in a specific space that will be soundproofed and what but also online is extremely important. We have got to evolve. We've got to embrace the spaces where we are invited to, to reach out, to, 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 to meet people. Sometimes I've done events online and somebody's commenting in New Zealand and they wanna talk now and somebody is, con is, co is commenting, they're based in, in Vancouver. And I'm thinking, can you just get on your screen, come over here? 
<laughs> and um, so I embrace the electronic things. And for us in our organization, I like the fact that uh, uh, nobody is opposed to the fact that uh, the more things uh, get in, into this uh, digital space, the, 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 the less of a huge room is needed because the, the digital uh, platforms make, a, a, make a, a small place so big because mm -hmm. you can press that button and access, mm -hmm. press that button and access. The vault is, is just limitless and we must embrace that. The same with our, our songs, our lullabies, uh, the same things uh, with our, our rhymes and rhythms, with our poetry, and also Amahubo, the, the ancient types of songs that are not sung so often and you won't hear them on radio, to bring those Amahubo into, into the fore and put those online so that young people in the future, maybe I won't be alive anymore, they will access and they say, I hear there was a thing called uh, the Kumbulani Memory House let me find out what they are talking about when they say amahubo, when they say izibongo zamakosi, when they look at osongkondro uh, abakamile, what do they hear about? What, 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 what was that about? They can access that. And so we are talking about digitizing these for posterity. Until we do that, we will uh, be stuck in one place. We shouldn't say, no, 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 we don't do it like that here. We want to do it the, the, the way that our forefathers did. Our forefathers didn't do what we are doing today. And mm. our children <laughs> are not gonna be doing things that we are doing today. And mm. things are gonna just keep evolving. Change is the most constant thing in the world. And uh, you've never seen the ocean looking the same. The waves mm. never stop, they're ever ever coming and going, they're ever inspiring, ever reigniting, ever regenerating. And so we need to be like that if we are to survive in this world and the environment, the environment, it's not only when you're talking about um, nature in trees and grass and plants and oceans and rivers and what, that's the environment that many people pretend it's not affected by the pollution that we human beings are visiting on the environment. But the same, there's a parallel environment we should be talking about, about our humanity, sense of compassion, being able to share with one another, people to grow together, to be able to say, if I'm too greedy, others are gonna go hungry. And hungry being a, a word that means so much because other people won't have access to resources because me, I'm too greedy. I want all of the possibilities, all the, the resources for myself. So the environment is a parallel uh, platform as well. Wow. That's beautiful. Okay, uh, Mam Tlina, we thank you so much uh, for, for these wonderful, uh, inspirational, uh, profound messages that you are giving us. Uh, today, it's like it's the first time I met the Global Sunday today, <laughs> the way I'm enjoying it. So I want to know, uh, uh, can I please ask you just one uh, question, uh, that if you could uh, collaborate with anyone, uh, living or dead, uh, besides me, because I know I collaborated with you uh, on the, the track of Chris, uh, Africa, Mother Mary. Mother, if Mother you Christmas. Could, mm -hmm. Yes. If you could, uh, could collaborate with anyone, living or dead, who would that be or what would that collaboration uh, contain? Thank you. One of my favorite storytellers in the whole world is a woman called Were Were Li King from Cote d'Ivoire. Her name is Were Were Li King. She's a storyteller. She's a singer. She's a composer. She's a multi-instrumentalist. She's an environmentalist. She paints and does amazing artwork. And she has started also a village where she brings together children from disadvantaged communities to be in this village with her. She's this mother that is just all embracing. And I adore this woman. And I would love to collaborate with her because I believe the future of the creative art discipline collaboration. So for me to collaborate with this awesome storyteller, powerhouse of a woman from Cote d'Ivoire, where I'd be so, so, so happy.
Wow, that's wonderful. People? It sounds like you have a lot of children all over the world. I do. <laughs> I'm one of them. <laughs> My daughter always talks about all of the children that I have all over the world. And sometimes we go to events and um, people come, Crazy, I know she's your mother, but did you know that she's my mother as well? And so I've got <laughs> many, many children in different parts of the world. <laughs> Maybe that's why the Almighty gave me just one child, uh, so that I can uh, accept all of these many, many children in different parts of the world. And I'm grateful. There is something that um, what you're speaking about is related to nonprofit organizations doing a very important work all over the world, all over the world. And every Global Sunday show, we present one nonprofit organization. So Lungani, who do we have today? Can I go back to Mr. Ludden and have one of those nonprofit or non-governmental organizations presented? Mm. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> this week, you know, uh, if you take all of the volunteers around the world, you have probably more than a billion people working hard every day without pay to make the world a better place. This is more than all of the armies, all of the governments, all of the corporations. Okay, I just want to point that out, that our weekly tribute to nonprofits and uh, NGOs is to point out that work so that we remember we have responsibility and we can participate in a way that does change things. These organizations create miracles. This week, we look at the miracle charity success of a man named Don Stevens. In 1978, he purchased a ship named Anastasis and his family lived on it for 10 years. The ship became known as the SS Hope. And on it, Don led thousands of professional volunteers from over 40 nations to turn the ship into a traveling hospital to care for individuals who are suffering and dying of common and uncommon diseases in places too poor to provide medical treatment and care. His dream became a global success story for nearly a half a century now, and it is going strong. Watch this video about his organization. Some of the images in this video are disturbing. Stick with it because you see how he transforms the disturbing into the distinguished. She can be described, can in, the be usual described in the usual ship. 500 ship. feet in length, eight decks, a crew of 450. Or you can reckon Africa Mercy as a hospital, 90 nurses, 15 doctors, 78 beds, and six operating rooms. Good, okay. One of the first doctors who invited us into surgery was Gary Parker, a maxillofacial surgeon who came to the ship on a lark. And I remember saying to myself, when I get opportunity, I want to come maybe for a few months and just see what this is about. See if I'm cut out of the right fabric for that kind of life. And how long have you been here? Uh, 26 years. Bonjour. You'll understand why he stayed when you see the ship at work as we did in Togo, West Africa. Gary Parker is the chief surgeon. Hello. And one of his patients, Ido, was back for a checkup 17 years after surgery. You're thinking she's disfigured now, but in 1995, at the age of nine, a tumor destroyed her face, and it was crushing her windpipe. She was struggling to breathe. I was amazed at the sense of community. Lots of people were waiting outside the gate, and many with problems of their own, but when they saw Ido, they picked her up, put her over, her, over their heads, and literally passed her through the crowd over the gate and into the screen because they recognized that her need was greater. These tumors aren't cancer, they're benign. In fact, it's tooth enamel that won't stop growing. In the U.S., a dentist would remove it before it ever showed, but here, it is understood to be a curse. 
These are people that go out at night and they forage for food and then in the day they hide. They can't go to the market. They certainly can't go to school. They are isolated. So these patients arrive mm -hmm. and they're coming up the gangway. What do you imagine that's like for them? I've seen it happen over and over and over again that when they are greeted on the ship or when they're greeted at screening and someone comes and shakes their hand, it's like, somebody recognizes that I'm inside here. You know, I'm trapped. I can't get away from this tumor, but I'm still in here. And the healing begins when they get acceptance based on who they are, no conditions, just we know you're in there. Fatimata, we know you're in there. And that's what he told a woman named Marta, who's been trapped behind a tumor that has been growing for three years. Her husband had banished her from the home. She could die. Oh, yeah. over time of this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Why in 2012 should people be dying of benign disease? There are lots of reasons. There are no good reasons, but there are lots of reasons why that's the case. Long tooth forceps, please. So you're going to replace her jaw with a titanium jaw, essentially. It's it, yeah. And then some months later, bone from the hip is taken and put around the titanium, and that grows into new jaw bone. We followed Marta's progress over several months, and in a moment, we'll show you the change. The uniform that's put on people when you have these terrible deformities is, you're rubbish, you're worthless, you're spiritually cursed, you're... And when you can change the uniform, it's huge. And the person starts to imagine that they might not be rubbish after all. No one in our world is rubbish. Ido, that first patient that we met who came here as a child, reclaimed her humanity with four surgeries in 17 years. I understand that you're in school. What are you studying? She wants to become a nurse to help other people too. She wants to be a nurse? Yes. She's met a lot of good nurses in her life. Yes. <laughs> the quickest change that we saw came in the patients who were the slowest up the gangway. Each step taken on trust. They're blind, cataracts. The surgery takes half an hour, cataract out, new lens in. Some of them had been blind for decades. Now they can see in 24 hours, a cause for celebration. The maxillofacial patients are years from healing completely. This was Marta before her jaw was replaced, and this is how she looked after surgery. The tumor is gone, it won't grow back, and when the ship returns, she'll have cosmetic surgery for the scars. Africa Mercy spent five months in this port. 281 tumors removed, 34 cleft palates made whole, and 794 blind patients returned to sight. With that, Africa Mercy threw off her bonds to Togo and steamed for another desperate point on the African coast. Inspiring, uplifting, a true miracle. Please go to mercyships.org on the internet and lend support in whatever way you can. Don't think that it's the money that matters the most. It's your effort, your attention, even your voice telling other people about it. And if you have a charity that's doing miracle work that you would like us to highlight here on Global Sundays, please send the information to us. And now we're going to go to a video, and we will see you on the other side of the video.
welcome back to our wonderful chocolate kit uh, producer of our show, The Global Sundays. And this is uh, Miss Classic, your queen. And I welcome you back, all the guests, uh, Miss Trina, uh, uh, Dr. Trina, I'm calling you Miss now, <laughs> and people, uh, Tafel, uh, Ken Laden, and also all our viewers at home. I would like to send a shout out uh, to Nikki Chocolik and Mosanda Dane. Uh, I would like to name the few as well. Tami Jali, uh, Dr. Yoli Nombola, the doctor there at the UKZN, uh, Fancy uh, Lee Chokwane and uh, Kuram Mufane, and also Sibusti Som Tembu. Uh, I would like to welcome all of you and would like to thank you for being with us today and also Kilari Maui Ndovu. I send a shout out. We love you guys. Happy Mother's Day and happy Africa Month. Over to you, Mr. Laden. Uh, thank you, Ms. Classic. And I vow one day I will be able to give the shout outs and, and pronounce those names, um, but not today. Um, so um, uh, doctor, I wanted to tell you something about my mentor, Margot Fontaine. She was an advocate against apartheid starting in 1963 um, in the show so commemorating the celebration of her birth. We'll go into details about that. But while she was there, she was so disturbed at what she saw happening to the Africans that she went back um, in 1973, 10 years later, she saved money. She did a bunch of programs to raise money so she could buy land and um, give an endowment to run a secondary school in Durban. And it's called the Margot Fontaine Secondary School. Um, mm -hmm. Now, she thought and she told me and many people that the next golden age in classical performing arts was going to come from the storytelling traditions of Africa, particularly because their storytelling traditions do not distinguish between dance, drama, music, artifact, paintings, sculptures. It's all one thing. And oh, yeah. um, so what stories would you like to see made into classical ballets and operas? <laughs> wow. Wang tinta lang tanda You know, one of the most um, amazing experiences I've had is um, a story I wrote years ago. It's called Lungile, the most beautiful girl in the land. It's um, about a girl who loved birds so much that she wouldn't marry any man unless it was a man who loved birds as much as she did. And she waited and she waited until people thought, okay, this one might have to wait until she marries a ground hornbill or something. <laughs> but uh, luckily, <laughs> her man arrived. Uh, Lungile was put up at the Playhouse Theater with um, a beautiful dance company and uh, choreographed by Mark Hawkins. And oh. our principal dancer was uh, Zintle Gumede the late Zintle mm. Gumede, who was just one of the most stunning, stunning, multi-talented uh, young ladies, and Spelele, who was um, her husband in, in, in the play. Our different um, dancers, I'd love to see that reproduced and growing even more. I always think that um, Lungile is the kind of show you can take to another country and have people of Pakistani background coming to be one of the suitors and somebody coming mm -hmm. from a Mexican background to be one of the suitors, somebody coming from um, Nanaimo in Vancouver, coming to be one of this, could be anybody from Bavaria coming to say, listen, I wanna marry this girl. And because that's what happens and different men who come from different parts come and propose and they do that in dance. So it's different styles of dance. So it's that type of show. And I'd love to reproduce that play. Another mm -hmm. one that we've done is um, uh, Fudugazi. Fudugazi, the, 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 the magic tortoise. And Fudugazi is the one who decorated all the different animals in the world. The costumes, they drive you crazy. The amount of fun you can have with that. And uh, the, the music, uh, the, and, and then the songs that are, that are recurring when she creates the music. The song that is recurring, can you imagine that in, in classical ballet with the different musical instruments? 
you you know the, the the tuba you've got the the violins you've got the cellos mm. you've got all of these different uh, instruments uh, playing to represent the hyena coming to represent the the, the, the queen mother tortoises to represent the, the zebra and then giraffe mm, sexy dude and oh, wow <laughs> so much is possible you can do that you know i've narrated peter and the wolf many times i've done it with with them um, with the berlin philharmonic i've done with um, with the stuttgart philharmonic orchestra i've done with the london philharmonic orchestra with ukzn with kzn philharmonic but i'd love to do fudugaz's magic with classical music that would be wow. fabulous we'll do it we'll do it we'll do it i vow i'm so happy i'm in <laughs> yes, especially then in that case, it means also the voices. We got people who can sing. Oh, mm. I love that. <laughs> Beautiful. Wow, that's lovely. You know, you're reminding me of the words that you used to say when you were saying in each and every one of us, we symbolize, we symbolize a certain animal in as we are, I don't know what animal I I I I I I, I am the character of as a mm. monkey with Miss Classic. Yes. But I know because you inspired me one day and told me that each and every one symbolized a certain animal in her or in him. So I don't know people what Our animal you symbolize. I don't Our know. family totems, they speak to us, you know, on Lovu, they are related to the elephant, you know, mm -hmm. you've got a, oh, oh, mamba, they are related to the mamba snake, and you've mm -hmm. got a, oh, Shengetwa, Shengetwa is a, is a, is a dolphin, and um, my mother, Masha is the tortoise. And then you've got the different um, in 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 my biological family. My my my, my parents, my, my the Mshope people. Our family totem is the moon. That's why we say wow. We get yeah. married under the moonlight. And so oh, every wow. family has got their own family totems. Other people are related to the eagle. Other people are related. So you never know. Find out home so me who you related to. Wow. And then what advice, Mamzena, would you give to a person who wants to start a career as a storyteller, who wants to be like you? I think um, you don't want to be like me. You want to be like yourself. You want to tell the story to the best of your ability and make sure you tell a story that you love. You start by telling just one little story that you know and make sure that you've got the most important weapon, language. When you don't have any language that you speak fluently, comfortably, you can't tell a story because you need language. That is the vehicle that carries stories. And wow. then knowing that um, when you are telling that story, you really love because a chef can never serve food that they don't enjoy. So mm. love it first before you tell it to others. You might have just one or two stories that you tell well. Over time, you develop and you tell more and more stories and make sure you don't only want to hear your own voice, hear other people's voices. Watch other people telling stories, listen to others. A good musician listens to other people's music. Yeah? A good painter goes to art galleries and sees other people's artwork. A fashion designer who doesn't uh, admire and support other fashion designers, mm -hmm. architects who don't like, so the same thing applies to a storyteller. Make sure you are not so self-absorbed that you want to be good, you want to be recognized, but you don't have the generosity of honoring others as well. Thank you so much. So you refer to your family. And there's one word I've learned studying the work you've been involved in is Goko. Yes. So Goko, that, my grandmother. That's the grandmother. Okay. So your grandmother, would she go to one of those classical dance evenings as well? <laughs> Did you take her? <laughs> You know, if if there was a, a production that told a story um, that, that speaks to her, I think she certainly would want to be there. She'd be amazed at how the story is told. You know, it's the, the same thing. It's like animation. I, I, I've never met the guy who's in charge of the animation um, company in Japan. They did a, 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 in Germany. It's called German. It's called Shihiro's Reise. In mm -hmm. English, is called Spirited Away. 
I mean, I think in, in Hollywood, they had a night vigil and they cried a lot when that movie come, came out because they were busy patting each other on the back. Oh, Shrek is so good, Shrek is so good. And then came out, spirited away. Hello, what are we gonna do? I think they must have had a night vigil and started crying all night because they didn't know what to do. These Japanese people, when they do animation, it's like you can touch the scales. You can see the flowers, you can almost smell the flowers. And so I think something like that, any elder, person in the Czech Republic and somebody in Uruguay, somebody in a village in South Africa, in Inanda, somebody in Opongolo, you know, somebody mm. in Limpopo would love to see that. Somebody in Bizana would say, what is this? Huh? Spirited away. They'd like to see that. The same thing when we take our own African folk tales and we translate and reinterpret them into classical dance productions. They would love that they would identify with that. Well, it sounds like that a lot of people need that and they need something that speaks to their insight. I personally believe that you can never underestimate your public. The moment that I consider my public something lower and you know, then I need to educate them I, I, I need to stop working and I need to find another job. I have, I have fought hard with production line producers and I said, no, don't underestimate the public. They will yeah. get it. They want to know it. And, and they said, yeah, you're dreaming. And I said, yeah, that is my job. My job is to dream. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. You know, two things I remember. Um, there's a, a playwright in America called August Wilson. Oh, yes. When he put up his play, it was called Fences. I was in America at the time. I was a resident um, visiting um, um, director in Chicago. And uh, his play was put up in, in New York. And many, many people came. He just was doing so well on Broadway. And then one night there was this woman who was a domestic worker and um, she had had to rush to get there and somebody was interviewing different members of the audience and they said how did you afford to come and see this play and this woman said i have saved money but, but why you could have done any number of things she said somebody told me that somebody is saying something that i need to hear awesome you're saying something that the audience needs to hear. They will know that. You're not the one who's gonna tell them that they need to hear that. Be true to yourself. Make sure that you're telling the most fundamental, the most uh, far reaching deep down from your soul story or song or dance or book that you're writing or poem. Give it that, that, that stamp of excellence. The audience will recognize that. And that is when the culture gets in touch with each other because it goes deep into the soul of the person, no matter the race, the it's religion, what, color, what culture, what color, religion, the education, you know, the yeah. size of your nose, the clothes yeah. you wear. And I feel that is very essential. That's a fact. That's a fact. Um, you know, I tell the choreographic students that I give a choreographic internship is that movement is universal. Everybody knows what it means when you turn your back, when you stamp your foot, when you hold your hand out with the palm. Everybody knows what that means. And if you are going to do a public work, it has to be universal. Classic is not old. Classic is always in style. Something that is classic is universal. It is timeless. And when people start to approach taking the stage, telling the story, making the film, singing and writing the song like Miss Classic does, creating a ballet or writing a book like I do, you, as people says, re show respect and admiration for your audience. Understand that they are human beings in a universe starring them and their yeah. life is very important to them just as much as yours is important to you and then find what we have in common and let's discuss it, let's share it because that is what draws us together, but it's also what allows us to be individuals and proud of ourselves. 
And so I am, I'm so inspired to talk to you. And, and when I think of these universal stories, I think Margot was right. The, the, the future golden age in the classical performing arts is going to come from those traditions in Africa, those storytelling traditions. And I don't know if you ever met Dame Margot or not, but I think she had you in mind when she was saying that. Thank you so much. You know, one of our great, great authors, Bessie Head, she was interviewed in 1972. I was too young at the time. I'm so glad that journalist didn't ask me this question. <laughs> they asked <laughs> Bessie Head, how do you think the revolution will come one day in South Africa? Her response was, it is impossible to guess how the revolution will come in South Africa one day, but in a world where all ordinary people are fighting for their rights, it is inevitable. But it is to be hoped that great leaders will arise there who will remember the many years of human suffering and out of that formulate new laws to treat everybody with common dignity and respect. It is also to be hoped that Southern Africa might one day become the home of the storyteller and dreamer who did not hurt others, but only introduced new dreams that fill the heart with wonder. New dreams that fill the heart with wonder. New dreams that fill the heart with wonder. That's Bessie Head talking. So Brava. Bravo. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, thank you so much, Mama Daughter, daughter Dr. Trina Mkhope. Uh, you are such an inspirational, um, you are indeed always fazan, always kukugaz, always onlayo, always nagegelayo. And uh, um, you are so beautiful inside and outside as you are also impacting to Unoma Kwezi, the respect inside and outside. I respect you. I salute you, Mama. We love you. Okay. Okay, we're going to we're going to wrap up today and we're going to go to a music video. It has been a blessing. It's been a joy for us, but it's been a blessing for the world and for our audience to have you here today. I am so appreciative. And we're going to look at a music video on the other side of the video. We will conclude our show, but I just wanted to thank you personally. It's been wonderful. Watch this. You are watching Global Sundays. Nikki, Kadi, we need to start the meeting. Kadi, you can't be eating through the meeting. You'll be farting soon. Stop laughing, Nikki. It's not funny. Kadi. Very funny. Hold on. I'm about to think. I'm, I'm about to get um some are you gonna, seasoning for are the shit because... Back? Yes, Nikki, I am. please click on the button on your phone there. The corner, the corner. There's a button there. Click on my phone on the yes. bottom. Can you tell those people are making noise, Kadi? Hey, I'm on live! So don't say nothing crazy. It's no bottom. It's just a keypad and the screen, and I see y'all There's text. no way there's a button, Nick, at the corner. You need to add 6 9 The meeting needs to start. I, this guy is eating my time. It's no bottom, y'all. Pause, but it's no bottom on my thing. There's a plus sign there. Look, look there, you see. There's no way. I'm not stupid. I can't tell you something that I know is not there. You know, please, guys, let's be serious. Time, y'all. I can't even block, unblock somebody. I don't know how to work this shit. Okay. So you insulting at me. I'm trying to help you now. What do you see in front of you on the sky? Literally, the only thing I see is like where I can type and comment. It says comment, and then under it is my keypad. Ask because we need six nine. Ask someone. And you know damn well these hood. Hoodlums don't know shit. Okay, you add yourself. There's a plus sign. Add six nine. We need to talk now, Nikki. Please, we don't have time. Find it out yourself. I don't have time, guys. You, you celebrities. You, I don't know why are you leaving. But can you be please come back, please? I don't have time. At 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 at, I should be out here. Come sit down. Stop doing what you're doing. Ooh. 
Stop being a kid, Kadi. And tell me where you coming from. What were you doing? Because we don't have time. We need to finish now. What were you doing when you left the, the meeting? We can't hear you, Nikki. You are, you mute yourself. So I found my taging powder. What? Cause one of these motherfuckers probably threw it away. But we gonna try Obey. Cause Obey kinda got the sick. It's not really the same type of spice with my mango. Sorry? What are you talking about? That is, that's one of the funniest video clips I, I've seen. I wish, I wish I could play it every morning when I wake up. Um, <laughs> welcome back to our show. And um, the most important thing I think is contact, connection. And what the question that I have is, how do the people contact you? What shows do you have coming up? How, is there a place on social media, email? How, how do you organize it so that people can reach out to you? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We have got a website that is um, www.trinamasigoarts-heritage.org. www.trinamasigoarts-heritage.org. Trinamasigo is G-C-I-N-A-M-A-S-I-K-O. The Nama Sigo Arts. And then, of course, you can find us on Facebook, the Nama Sigo Arts and Heritage Trust. You can find us on Facebook. And um, we also, you find us on, 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 um, on um, what, in different events that we are having. Like on the 28th of May, we are doing the virtual launch of our book, uh, the, which is called Our Storytelling Tree. And uh, then, of course, I'm also working with um, with um, a few musicians here in Durban to put together uh, my CD of poetry and music. So it will be the book accompanied by the CD of poetry and music. We're gonna get into the studio. I don't know what we're gonna cook, but we're gonna cook some lovely things. And um, so I'm excited about that. We will announce it when it's out. And another thing that is coming up for us is that we will be preparing for a, quite a, a, a tour in different parts of, um, of um, KZN, um, Eastern Cape, um, Pumalanga province and Gauteng. We are collecting stories for the Oral History Museum. So we'll be visiting different places. And I'm really, really grateful that um, some of the people, some of the elders have already agreed for us to visit them. The festival in October is on the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th of October. Mm. And uh, really? so it's here in Durban. Probably there'll be other events uh, leading up to the festival before that. But National Storytelling Day is the 24th of October, 11 o'clock sharp. Get ready, tell stories wherever you are. All right. <laughs> and that is the birthday, so don't forget ah, to give a big shout out right. for your birthday on that day, actually. Oh, yes, it's my birthday, it's National amazing. Storytelling Day in South Africa. That will so, be day. <laughs> that will be the oh, day. Oh, yes, huh? oh, yes. Put it in your calendar, and also, if you dive into the internet, um, everybody, you can find a lot of works. And recently there have been films put on YouTube where you can see uh, about the program that you have led for 20 years. And you can see, yes. for example, the film Liana, which is a beautiful yeah. film of, of orphans. And, and, you know, as, as I learned that there are more than 200,000 orphans in what, formerly was called um, Swaziland and that there is such such incredible power in, in storytelling that it's incredible. It, these are children and these children tell their stories and oh yes, it speaks to us. And you said your grandmother would go to a classical theatrical dancing performance that would speak to her. If those children are able to speak to us, the way they do, 
I'm sure we will find a way that there will be a classical theatrical dancing that will be in that way. And I believe, because this is especially something, for example, that I do not know storytelling. So I work with atmospheres as an artist, I create atmospheres. And every time I, I, I face a new work, it's, I don't know how to do it. And it always works out. And it reminds me of Jiddu Krishnamurti, who said, let's go for a walk and have a conversation and look at the tree and share our views of it. And mm. that is what we had in the beginning. So I know that Lungani has me today on his spot, you know, for the timing, but we're not yet there. We're almost ready to wrap up. However, if I wrap up too fast, I might get a speeding ticket from him. So, <laughs> you know, we, we, we need to land, you know, on the spot. So um, <laughs> I, can, I can really encourage everybody to get in touch with you as an artist through your work. And there's a lot to discover. And I, I wanna give a shout out to two of the people you have worked to who answered to me immediately in the last days. And, and this is um, Adrian Kier's agency and you have been featured in um, 21 um, icons and yes. they made a film about you. And they immediately got back to me and, and, and said, you know, do you want to use the portrait and, and extremely kind. So that's been very impressive. That means that the people you're in touch with, they honor your work and they want to, mm -hmm. you know, uplift your work. It's not about you as a person, I feel, it's about mm -hmm. the work. And that is the what work. is important. it is the work that yeah. the work speaks. And the other person um, is um, a director, and um, her name is Lindy Wilson. And ah. uh, <laughs> Lindy answered, and you made a film in 1993, a traveling story. Oh my God, a traveling song! Ah, that traveling was such song. an experience. And I, I, I try to get hold of more of, of the films you have been involved in, you know, to get a feeling. And she answered yes. that, let me try. We couldn't figure it out because I think it's the privacy settings, Germany and South Africa. That's true. And that's true. Kalushi oh, as well about uh, I acted the mother of uh, Solomon Matangu, the freedom mm -hmm. fighter. I acted the part of Martha. But also interestingly, in Germany, we worked with Patmos Radio and produced um, a, a CD of this story, Fujukaze's Magic, that I'd like to do with a, with a Philharmonic Orchestra in German. Well, <laughs> I really, I really hope uh, it will work out. And the people you've worked with here and that you came, um, I believe it was uh, Lady Smith Black, Mana Basso. Black Manabazo, yes, and Francis Bibi Cotet, Francis Bibi from Cameroon. That's the people who we did uh, Africa the Opera with. And in fact, it was um, produced by Wolf von Gaudeka and Marion von Gaudeka from the Grio Agency. I've so, worked with them for so many years. They are based in, uh, in Hamburg. You, you, I, I guess what people can see here that if you are an artist, you are able to, to, to meet a family out there. And like in a family, there are fights. You know, and sometimes, you know, <laughs> there is clashes. Yeah. The real world. However, it's worth it. So um, yeah. if you have a talent, you know, go there, share your talent with the world. And for the closing of the show, I wanted to invite you, if, if anybody has something to say, a last word, a minute, Mr. Ladin. I, all I wanted to say, um, there's so much to say that I look forward to working together in the future. But I just wanted to also point out that another one of your gifts is your unbelievably powerful and beautiful voice. Um, mm. You are you God touched you right here when you were born because that speaking voice of yours, the sounds that you make, and when you sing. It, it's transformative. And I just wanted to just say an appreciation to that. It was, it's beautiful to listen to you.
Thank you so much. You're welcome. It's classic wrap up. Yes, my, our mother, a friend, uh, um, I don't know what I can call you, but Uto Gotela, not just a doctor as for profession, but you are a doctor to our hearts and souls. Uh, as we listen and read to your stories, we get inspired every day, uh, especially the book that I've, le I've read when I was in a metric. It was, uh, have you seen Zandi? That book, it's, you know, it's made a difference in my life because I relate to Zandi. Yeah. So thank you so much. Um, and the Global Sunday fans and everyone, they, they know that I'm the Zandi that is in that book. So thank you so much. And uh, keep, your, keep your head up, have faith, and never give up on us and to yourself as well. Thank you so much, Mama. Mamtina, mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. I would like to say uh, thank you so much um, for availing yourself, for making time to the Global Sunday Show. Um, I know you are very busy. Uh, you've been up and down. I mean, I worked my ass to be able to get you in contact with you you know i had to go through a lot of people and you still made time to be part of the show um thank you so much and now you are part of the family each and every time you have something going on um you will definitely let us know as global sunday and we're going to tell your friends because you have new followers now which are global sunday uh, followers i just wanted to say that before people um close for us uh, thank you so much and welcome uh, to the global sunday show What happens, COVID-19 or no COVID-19, challenges will come in this world. But as we say in Isuzulu, we are, sir. even when the cock doesn't crow, dawn will break. So wow. let's hold on mm. to hope and things will get better. The difficult again, and they will get better one more time. Working together, we always make a difference. Powerful. Thank you so much. People, over to you. Well, thanks for watching. This is the Global Sunday Show. I hope to see you next week. It was a pleasure to be here with you and see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>